Beautiful. Thank you, Francois. That was deadry. Nice. Beautiful. What is prayer and what is meditation? What is the difference? That's what we're looking at today in our continuing study of the book, Think, Feel, and Heal. Eight Keys to Health and Wholeness. Meditation and prayer. Well, you've probably heard the saying, prayer is talking to God and meditation is listening to spirit, right? How many of you heard that saying before? Just out of curiosity, how many of you have a daily meditation practice? How many of you are practicing meditation on a daily basis? Okay, thank you. So that gives me a little bit of idea of, of where to go as we uh, experience, have this experience together. So I don't know about you, but I think most people, when they think about prayer, they think about something that you do when you have a crisis. <laughs> you know, you have some kind of uh, urgent situation, or maybe you have a need. Uh, financial need, relationship thing, some a concern about another person, or something that they're concerned about. I think for a lot of people, that's when they pray, you know. Uh, they've done everything, and it's like, well, you, you better pray. Well, let's pray. Nothing else is working. Let me pray, right? Uh, a lot of us grew up that way. I was raised Jewish, and... Yet, I, you know, I, I don't think I was ever taught how to pray. I mean, we used to read prayers in books. Um, and I was, went to Hebrew school the first six years of my life. Uh, most of the, It was half a day Hebrew and half a day English. Half a day Hebrew studies and the other day, the rest of the day, English studies. And what I remember is a lot of it was reading prayers that were given to us. Uh, prayers and books, and uh, there were morning prayers that we read. They were already written, and there were in synagogue. There were prayers that the rabbi said, and there were prayers that we read. That's what I remember. And I think I can remember a few times when I did actually talk to God. I always had this sense that there was a God. I believed in God, but it was sort of out there somewhere, you know, this, this powerful being out there. Probably a man, you know, somewhere, a male, powerful being up there somewhere who I respected. Uh, you better respect him. And, uh, you know, that's for me. And there were a few times when I actually prayed. I think when I was around eight years old or so, I prayed that my mom and my stepfather and, you know, would not die, <laughs> you know, and because uh, I needed them more than anything else. I remember that. I remember praying uh, as I got a little older, meeting that 12-year-old girl by the pool. Um, uh, amazing. That ended up happening. I'm surprised I didn't pray more often after that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I I prayed at certain times. And I think that for a lot of people, prayer is, is out to some being out there somewhere, which from a metaphysical standpoint, that presence is everywhere. So that presence is out there, right? But it's more like it's out there and I've got to convince that presence to do something for me. And people plead, beg, bargain, praise, etc., try to be good so that presence will do something for them. How many of you have ever prayed like that in your life? Yeah, I think most people probably have, and that's one view of prayer. And as John Strickland points out in his book, and I'd like to make this point too, I haven't made it enough over the years probably, there is no wrong way to pray. There's no wrong way to pray. People's prayers have been answered in all different manners, right? 
People have, uh, as Strickland points out, he said when he had kidney stones, all he could do is scream at God. <laughs> That's the only way he could communicate at that time. How many of you had kidney stones before? Uh, I never knew what writhing pain was until I had a kidney stone. Yes, I get it. But people have had their prayers answered in many different ways. I like the definition of prayer I got in ministerial school, which was, Prayer is anything that directs your attention towards spirit. Anything that draws your attention to a higher power, uh, this greater force, this greater presence that's everywhere present, is prayer. And some of the ideas I want to share today are ideas that perhaps can help you with your prayer life. If you want to add something to your prayer life, if you want it, maybe it will help your prayer life. You notice how we're not making anybody wrong for how they pray. There's no wrong way to pray. There might be more direct ways of praying. There might be ways that might be more effective. They, they might work for you better. And I want to share some ideas that are make more sense to me that appealed to me and have helped in my prayer life over the years. I like the Sanskrit word for prayer, which is palal, P-L-A-L, to behold oneself as wondrously made, prayer. Now, that's a twist on the idea of prayer, isn't it? We've gone from praying out here to get this being to do something for us, to what? Palau to behold oneself as wondrous made? That sounds blasphemous. Doesn't it sound blasphemous? To behold yourself as wondrously made? That's prayer. What are you talking about? Here's what I'm talking about. This presence is everywhere present. It's in all and through all. It's in and as you. You're an expression of this presence. And so, therefore, it's not really necessary to get this presence to do anything for us or for you. It's already done it. This presence, Joel Goldsmith, the great Jewish healer, used to say, uh, what is God doing? God is being. God is being life. God is being Love, God is being substance, God is being all good every moment of the day. And ours prayer is to know that, is to become aware of that. See, it's already done. We don't have to convince God to do anything. We don't have to convince spirit to heal us. We don't have to convince spirit to, to organize our relationship, to make it harmonious. We don't have to convince God to open up doors of opportunity for us. We don't have to convince God to bring a partner into our life. We don't have to do any of that because this presence is always seeking to unfold its good inside of us and into our life. So we don't have to plead. We don't have to beg. We don't have to bargain with. It's not necessary. We simply have to accept and embrace the presence that's already active. Is that biblical? Yes. Jesus said it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible says, God is in all and through all. It's everywhere present. The key is knowing it. Knowing it. Beholding oneself as wondrously made. Prayer in its simplest, most simple form is, well, perhaps in its most simplest form, it's simply saying, yes. <laughs> yes, I, I let it be. I allow it to express. Yes. What is the healing you want in your life? What is the harmony you want in your life? What is the abundance you want in your life? What is the good that you want in your life? Can you say yes to it? Do you feel a yes to it? 
How many of you have a yes to your prayer? One, two, three, I want you to say yes together. One, two, three, yes. yes. All right. A yes to that good in your life because it's always seeking to unfold through us. And we're either saying yes to it through our thoughts, through our words, through our behaviors, or we're saying no to it. We're saying if, we're, if our focus of attention is on the opposite, if we're constantly talking about what's wrong in the relationship, why it's not working, and we're griping or complaining about the situation, and we're telling all of our friends about it, and it's always on our mind of what's wrong, and, and uh, you know, oh, whoever we can tell about our physical problem, if that's where we are, then we're like that man by the pool of Bethesda who was waiting to get healed for 38 years. We're staying, we're stuck. Albert Einstein said, I'm sure you've heard it, you can't solve a, a problem from the same level of consciousness that created it. You've got to raise your consciousness. That's what prayer is. Prayer is raising our consciousness from our limited thought process to the lack and limitation to a higher vibration, a higher energy where the solution is. We're beholding ourselves as wondrously made. We're lifting our consciousness to a higher level of wholeness and completeness. Make sense? So that's a way of understanding prayer. You don't have to. Now, you can. You can talk to God. You can speak about your issues. You can talk to God about it. You can ask God for help. There's no problem with that. I just like to add that know that spirit is always wanting to bless you and is seeking to bless you and, and unfold in your life. So when you ask, you expect good to happen. And on a deeper sense, I'm talking on different levels here. I hope you can see that. There are different levels of prayer that we're talking about right now. And we're saying that all of them can work depending on where your heart is. Now, from a metaphysical and a unity perspective, well, even in unity, there is latitude in a prayer, okay? There's latitude in the unity movement about what constitutes prayer. When I worked for the late Eric Butterworth, uh, who wrote Discover the Power Within You and influenced Oprah Winfrey and Dr. Angelou and Brian Tracy and a lot of people, Wayne Dyer, when I first started to work with him as his assistant, uh, I, he corrected me on the way I was praying because <laughs> I would speak twice a month. And uh, in the beginning, uh, he said, you know, you're praying as if God is out there. He said, Charles Fillmore never prayed like that. Charles Fillmore always prayed, you know, I am now aware that God is present and God's life and wholeness is in every cell of my body. He prayed as if it were already done. You see the difference there? So prayer can be an affirmative thing. That's what unity has taught for over 100 years. Affirmations are affirming that God's presence is already here and now. So, I mean, that way of praying uh, to me has been very helpful. So you have a healing challenge. You affirm that it's already Health and wholeness is already happening in your body. I am whole, well, and strong. God's healing life is now restoring my lungs, my heart, my hip, my brain, whatever it is, to wholeness and perfection. See, you're affirming that it is already so. Charles Fillmore went as far, I believe I read one time, he said, affirm it 500 times a day if you need to. 500 times a day. How many people have the discipline to do that? I mean, that's really knowing the truth of a, of a prayer, you see. But the key is knowing that you're not making it happen. You're affirming what is already true. You're not 
praying affirmations to make God come in. If I say him enough, if I say him loud enough, God's going to do something. No, you're awakening what's already true. You're accepting it in your consciousness. Because there's something, we're assuming, there's something in our consciousness that's blocking the flow. There's something in our consciousness that's blocking that life force from circulating or uh, with something that's, that's frustrating the expression in our life. So an affirmation is accepting it on a deeper level, the truth. So prayer, affirming the good that is already happening. Someone can say, well, uh, I'm doing that, but it doesn't seem to be changing anything. And that's a whole nother discussion. But the key is, is it changing you? Is it helping you to shift your consciousness into a more accepting state of the good? Make sense? Or is it getting you out of a constant focus on what's not working and what's wrong in my life and getting you into a higher state of consciousness? The late Emmett Fox who wrote a lot of wonderful books, he taught something called the golden key. He said, instead of thinking about your problem, think about God. Think about spirit. Instead of just constantly dwelling on the problem, he said, golden key your problem. And during the day, put that problem aside and think about God. Think about the qualities of spirit. Spirit is health. Spirit is wholeness. Spirit is guidance. Spirit is strength. Spirit is working in every area of my life. Spirit is everywhere present. It's, it's unlimited substance. It's unlimited creativity. So for that few seconds, we just focused on what spirit is. We golden keyed everything else by focusing on spirit. And what happens is, now what happens is we have opened ourselves to a greater expression of the kingdom within by shifting our consciousness to a higher vibration. Wayne Dyer used to talk about uh, levels of energy and consciousness. Problems are in a lower level of energy and consciousness and the solutions of life and healing and Prosperity and abundance are on a higher level of consciousness. And when you golden key something and shift your attention to thinking about spirit, you have just raised your consciousness to a higher level. And that's prayer. That's prayer. So what do we say? We said prayer from a unity perspective, from a metaphysical perspective, it's, it's not trying to convince or cajole or bargain. It's accepting what spirit has already done Spirit has put the kingdom of God within us. Spirit is everywhere present. And it's developing that awareness of that presence in your life right now. That's prayer. That's prayer. I love the quote that uh, Henry read. Those of you who were here earlier in the service, uh, I gave her a quote from Yogananda, which is, he says, it's okay to ask for things. It's okay to ask God for things. But he said, what's even better is if you have the attitude of thy will be done. Because spirit knows what you need and what you want. Spirit knows the highest possible good for you. Why wouldn't she? (laughs) Right? Why wouldn't she? She created you. She's everywhere present. She's being you. She's being me. Why wouldn't she know the highest good possible for you and for me? And I, you know, most of the time I just live in that trust that whatever I need, when I need it, shows up. Right? There's freedom in that, isn't it? There's freedom in that. However, you might be in different places at different, different consciousnesses at different times in your life. You might, that might work perfectly for you now, but at another time in your life you might feel like, gee, I need to talk to God. I need to talk to God. And then you do that. Another time you might feel like you need to affirm something for your life. And you need to keep that affirmation going throughout the day. Or you need to practice the golden key. Sometimes you might need to visualize yourself experiencing the good that you want in your life. I like to see it as a toolkit of prayer options 
during your, you know, living your life. And there's no wrong option. But the more you understand the truth, the more you can apply it with whatever situation you're facing. So prayer is anything that directs your attention to spirit. How about meditation? I'm not going to go a lot into meditation because probably most of us are familiar with meditation. And every Sunday in our services, if you, if you uh, missed the meditation earlier today, any Sunday service, you can listen to a guided meditation. And that's basic steps of meditation. Meditation is essentially learning to quiet the mind, even still the mind, and open the heart. For me, meditation is where you go beyond words and thoughts. Joel Goldsmith had a book by that title, Go Beyond Words and Thoughts, where it's really, if you wanted to anthropomorphize it, it's when God is listening to your heart. And you're listening to God. You know, you, spirit knows everything about you and about me. It doesn't need to hear what we have to say. And meditation is really getting still and quiet and communing with spirit. I once asked Eric Butterworth that question. I said, I said, Eric, isn't it all about just getting still? And he said, yeah, essentially that's what it's all about. It's connecting in the stillness with spirit. There's your prayer. There's your prayer. But because we're verbal creatures, because we like to vocalize stuff, you can add that into your prayer life. It, it's even a good place after your meditation to verbalize, you know, if, you, if, you're, if you're wanting to experience healing, after you get still in the stillness, then you can verbalize it. God's healing life is flowing through my body, restoring my body to wholeness and perfection. Or, or the Spirit of the Lord goes before me, making my way joyous, prosperous, and successful. You know, you're vocalizing it. Is it necessary? No. But because we like to vocalize it, that's a great way of doing it. You know, and using the affirmation during the day. But meditation is essentially learning to relax your body, quiet your mind, and commune with the presence of God within. That's what I think real, the deepest inner communion is. Again, we're not saying taking communion in a church is wrong. It's not wrong. It helps people. People can be helped by it. Unless it's just rote and there's no thought in it, then it's just... You might as well, I don't know, I won't go there. <laughs> Not necessary, but uh, there's nothing wrong with, with an outer communion if it helps to uplift a person's consciousness. But the deepest inner communion, which I believe it was really about, Jesus said to his disciples here, this is my body, this is my blood, take, eat, drink, right? Ultimately, it's you're having an inner communion with the source of your being. You're eating, you're drinking of that joy, of that life force, of that substance of God that is within you. And in that inner communion, that is releasing and allowing more of the kingdom to unfold through and as you, so that you are transformed. The true transmutation is not the the well, again, a differing belief. I'm giving a deeper understanding of that. I wasn't planning on talking about this, so somebody must need to hear it. That deeper transmutation is not of the wine and the bread becoming the body of Jesus. It's releasing more of the substance of spirit, the life within you. You become the transmutation. You become the transformation because God is expressed more fully through and as you. That's the deepest inner communion. Jesus said, he who has seen me has seen God. Why? He wasn't saying God came out of the sky to be me. He was saying, I am radiating the presence of Christ. I am radiating. I am expressing that which God is. 
When you take time on a daily basis to get still and to commune with your higher power, your true nature, your true self, you begin to express the fruits of the Spirit. You begin to radiate more love. You begin to radiate more joy. You begin to radiate more light so that you become the wonderful expression of God in your life. He who has seen you has seen the Father. When you do something kind, generous, loving, when you express yourself in a strong way when it's necessary, when you take actions and that help to bring greater good on the planet, he who has seen you has seen the Father. They're seeing God, the universe, the source, expressing through and as you in your life. When you do something loving and kind, they are seeing God being God through and as you. And all that can happen by taking time daily to pray, to get still, to meditate, to experience an inner communion with spirit, with God, with the source. When you do that, you're doing what Jesus did. It said Jesus went apart. Jesus went on to the mountain. And many times it said Jesus went off into the desert to pray. Jesus went up on a mountain to pray. What was he doing? He was going inside. That's symbolic of going to your own mountain, going to your own desert, going to a place of solitude where you can experience inner communion and you can be lifted up to a higher level, a higher vibration, so that now whatever you need comes into your life at the time that you need it, even the challenges. But the challenges come in and you have the resource to deal with them because you are tuning in on a daily basis. And that's important to know. It's important to develop a habit of prayer and meditation because a lot of people wait to the last minute. You know, they pray when there's a crisis. But the, that's like, you know, you need it most. You need that power the most when you have these big challenges. That's like, you know, someone waiting until the concert to be able to learn how to play the, the, the piece they want to play. Oh, I'm going to, when, when the concert's here, then I'll just get on the piano and play it. No, no, no. You got to practice, 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 and practice. Otherwise, you're not going to be prepared when you need it. You want to be prayed up, pre-prayed. You want to be pre-prayed when the problem comes up, right? Pre-prayed, pre-prayed, <laughs> pre-prayed, pre-prayed when the issue comes up because now you've been dipping yourself in a reservoir of wisdom and power and strength on a daily basis so that when something comes up, you are ready. You are ready. You are centered. You are, because these things don't broadcast. They don't always tell you when they're going to show up, right? Something happens and wow, there it is. But when you are pre-prayed, you are ready for it. You have a reservoir of whatever you need in the moment that you can face whatever it is you need to face. You're, you're ready. And that's why it's important on a daily basis to take time to pray, to meditate. And it can be two or three minutes. When I started meditating back in 1986, I started with just a couple of minutes. A couple of minutes to get quiet and to get still every day, every day. And when that becomes a priority, you don't miss it. You don't miss it. For many, many years, I didn't miss it. It just, I just made it a habit. I think eventually you reach the point where you can skip it and still maintain that, that centeredness. But uh, for many, many years, I just did not miss it at all, ever. Why? Because it becomes a habit. It becomes a practice. It becomes part of you. And so I encourage you to find the time. Oh, I don't have time. I'm busy. You know, it's the holidays and I got family stuff and I got kids and I got to run to the work and the job. And believe me, you can find time wherever you are. Amen. Right. Amen. How many of you know that? Amen. You know that, right? You can meditate on a subway, you can meditate on a bus, you can meditate on a train, 
You can meditate before the kids get up. You can meditate before you go to bed. You can turn the TV off a little sooner. You can get off the TikTok sooner and the, the Facebook and the Twitter and the text messaging. And you can find the time to do time for prayer and meditation. Because, again, that's the foundation for everything. It's the foundation for everything. Jesus said, you know, if you don't build your foundation on rock, if you build it on sand, the storms will come, the winds will blow, and your house will blow down. But a foundation built on rock, those winds will come, those storms will happen, and you will find yourself packed with strength. You'll find yourself centered in power. I know that from personal experience, going through some very difficult challenges and knowing that I was established in rock. And there is no substitute. There is no drug that's going to do that for anybody. There is no exercise routine that's going to do that for anyone. There is no diet, no program of nutrition that's going to do that for you. There are no circle of friends that are going to do that for you. That is the foundation. Only finding your strength in the power and presence of God is how we can develop a foundation that will be there no matter what. Daily prayer, daily meditation, that is the key for the strength, for the joy, for the fulfillment of our deepest longing. Let's get still for a moment. We thank you, Father, Mother God, for your teaching today for your reminder of the truth of your presence, for your guidance and direction in reigniting our prayer and meditation life or starting one from the beginning. Thank you for revealing to us how universal prayer is, how we all need prayer. And thank you for guiding us and making this a habit, showing us how we can prioritize our life in a better way giving us clarity so we know which things we can say no to and which things we can say yes to. Thank you for guiding us and helping to make you a priority in our life, to make prayer and meditation a priority as the foundation of our life. We thank you, Father, Mother, God. And so it is. Amen.